Hello, I'm going to make a response over the course of two videos, I hope, to uh, the rejoinder of my Nietzschean 101 about um, my previous video on the death penalty. To bring you up to speed, uh, if you're coming in to the discussion at this point, um, this is how events have transpired thus far. Nietzschean 101 posted a video uh, in support of the death penalty. I replied to that video. Nietzschean 101 then made uh, two video rejoinders to my reply and um, now I'm going to be making probably at least two video uh, responses to his rejoinder. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, I would encourage you to uh, look at the previous videos um, to kind of bring yourself up to speed about where we are in the discussion. I will try, however, um, uh, to explain things sufficiently so that you can follow um, uh, what I'm replying to and what's been previously said and so on. Now Nietzsche in 101 wants to confine the discussion of the application of of the of capital punishment to the most particularly heinous kinds of murders, he says. And I understand why he wants to do that. Uh, he's not anxious to see he's not anxious to see the death penalty applied, uh, and he thinks it should be applied, however, for these these particular kinds of crimes. Um, and he doesn't think it should be expanded beyond those kinds of crimes. So I understand that a lot of people who support the death penalty actually feel that way. They're not out to see lots of people get executed. Um, <clears throat> the problem, however, is a practical problem, and I raised this in a, a, a previous video, that although people like Nietzsche in 101 don't want to see the cap capital punishment applied to other kinds of crimes than the most particularly heinous murders, uh, very often legislate, legislatures do. They do want to apply uh, capital punishment to other kinds of crimes. Uh, like, for example, I've read cases where there's been attempts to apply the death penalty to rape and even to arson. So, uh, that practical problem, it still seems to me, obtains. But for the sake of the discussion, let's talk about the capital punishment in terms of people who commit heinous murders. Nietzsche 101 says that we demonstrate love for the victims of murder by executing their murderers, and that it's an affirmation of life to impose the death penalty. About that latter statement, uh, Nietzschean 101 says, admits that that sound might sound paradoxical on its face, and I would say that it is indeed paradoxical. It's paradoxical to say that we affirm life by taking a life, but I understand without agreeing where I understand what Nietzschean 101 is saying. He's basically saying we affirm the life of the victim, the value of the life of the victim, by opposing the death penalty on the victim's murderer. Uh, <clears throat> I still think that's paradoxical, so um, beyond saying that, I don't know what else to say. Um, but Nietzsche 101 does make a very interesting um, iteration of this argument, and he says that without the death penalty, um, we're basically saying that we don't value that which was taken from us, that is the life of the victim. Without the death penalty, we don't value that which was taken from us. Now, I think this is an extremely interesting argument, um, and it um, it goes to the very heart of an issue about how we value life in a society. Do we value life in society in a contingent way? or in an intrinsic way. 
it seems to me to the, to the extent that we possibly can that we must strive always to have an, to hold an intrinsic value to life as opposed to a contingent value but it seems to me that's the problem with the death penalty the death penalty basically says in effect that we as a society will value your life as long as you don't commit a capital offense that is we your value the li your life has value contingent upon you obeying this particular law this particular rule your life really doesn't have intrinsic value and it seems to me that's the problem with the death penalty is the message that society is giving is that your life only has contingent value and doesn't have intrinsic value. Nietzsche 101 also argues that murder is offense against the very roots of civilization and that one who commits murder has forfeited his or her right to participate in civilization. But not participating in civil civilization, which is not defined by Nietzsche 101, doesn't necessarily equate into forfeiting one's life for murder. After all, we could define not participating in civilization in such a way that life imprisonment without parole for murder suffices. So I'm not sure why there's an equation between not participating in civilization and losing your life. Um, but perhaps Nietzsche and 101 can elaborate on that point further. In a previous interview, uh, 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 previous video, I talked about the possibility of executing someone who's innocent. Nietzsche and 101 uh, says that this problem gives him some pause about the death penalty, um, and that um, uh, with scientific methods of of gathering evidence and so on that we pro probably can reduce that um, the chance of executing someone innocent innocently um, <coughs> to a minimal degree uh, but uh, he admits that it's a, a you know a permanent possibility that we could get it wrong uh, and and even though that's a permanent possibility he thinks that we should continue with the death penalty he argues that we can imprison people wrongly, uh, but that doesn't stop us from imprisoning people simply because we've imprisoned someone who was innocent of the crime for which they were imprisoned. It seems to me that there's a huge and fundamental difference, almost a categorical difference, between imprisoning someone uh, who's innocent and executing someone who's innocent. And that is, we can make amends to those we imprison unjustly, but we can't make amends to those that we execute unjustly. And when I say we can make amends to people we've imprisoned unjustly, of course I mean, you know, to a certain extent we can make amends, but it's impossible to any extent to make amends to those that we execute unjustly. And this goes to the very heart of something that's fundamental about society. You see, the continuation of life is the indispensable condition for rectification by society. And society should build into their moral and political infrastructures the possibility of being fallible and the possibility of making amends for when it acts in a fallible way. And the sine qua non for being able to um, build into the infrastructure uh, a society's fallibility and its ability to rectify for its fallibility is the continuation of life. But the death penalty negates that. And I think that is a, it's one of the huge problems. Uh, uh, for the death penalty. I think I'm going to stop right here uh, and continue on with another video.